Welcome back to Final Action from the Passion for Speed Festival here at SWAT Cops. Get your lounges ready. Why don't you go to cash converters probably? <laughs> ready to go now for the final bit of action out on circuit. We're heading into the historic saloons, classes A to H. But basically, we've got class C to H, all represented here in a very, very big field of cars, about to go to battle for the first time. You've got the likes of Capris, Escorts, Chevy, Camaros, Alphas out there as well. There's a big contingent of Sirocco's. And then look out for Willie Hepburn out there in the very fast Chevy Camaro. Rion Bortman is going to be joining him as well. It's great to have him back in a big Chevy Camaro, going side by side with Darren Goodmans as they head down towards Turn 1. And into Turn 1, you can see them using a little bit more of the road than what's required, and a bit on the grass as well. Robin Clark out there as well as there's big braking and locking up from Goodmans down into Turn number 2. He's got that big Ford Capri of his fighting off the big attack coming from the Camaro. But a red flag right in the start of the race due to a big incident in turn one. Rene Fernandesburg being just uh, hit up the back end there by Mark O'Sullivan, but I don't think O'Sullivan had anywhere to go. Oh, there's some issues. Nick Sherwood in the Gib replica. I think the throttle cable might have broken on that little XR activity. And that's the furthest he's got around Swart Corps Raceway. We're under starters orders now. Once again, let's see if this time we can get all 30 plus cars through turn number one. All safe and sound. Does look like it. You can't, you can't blame these drivers for trying to get onto the dirty stuff. Just to try and find some track to make those moves. It's a brilliant category of racing this to have so many cars out on and this is exactly what the spectators have come out. That guy in his cash converters lounger is going to be loving this. Yeah, he certainly is as they come through there. Miguel Ribeiro in the Metal Use Bears car. Nice to see little livery on the back saying uh, farewell to a very, very fast lady in fast racing from Big Boss Auto, Jen Robertson. A little RIP to her and to the whole family. But as they head up towards the top of the hill, there's certainly racing happening here right through the field, Rob. How cool is this? Nice to have Rion Bortman back in a race car. It's been a long time since he's been behind the wheel of a race car, but he certainly hasn't lost any of that edge sitting at the moment in second place. And the man who's got the biggest supported crowd here there in fourth place at the moment, Mario Rossi, although it's unfortunately not him that they're supporting, but rather the famous number bike racing 46. But coming through the field, they're car 53. Stuart Koning there, just running inside the top 10. Good drive so far. Watch out for that blue and white little Ford Escort. Alan Green has done something special to that Mark 1. And look at how it's ripping up. Oh, oh some issues though. The Sirocco's gone. Yanni van Rooyen's car pulling to the sideline and he's out of this one. That's a big loss to a field. Yanni van Rooyen in this particular category is a stalwart of this racing. And to lose him so early on is a massive, massive loss to this field. But as I said, keep an eye out on Alan Green. That little Ford Escort is slowly but surely getting into the clutches and right onto the tailpiece of those big V8s. Still the early parts, parts of this race, but the lap times that these cars are churning out is really impressive. Neil Lobb, former bike racer as well, coming through the field there. Just at the front end, the lap times are so impressive. The grip and the stability that they're getting out of these cars. You can see wrestling these cars around. Not easy to get one of these around this track at the pace that they are doing at the moment. Alan Green applying the pressure onto that Marlboro coloured Alfa Romeo GTV. Beautiful. Nice to see all the old livery being uh, put onto those cars as well. And Green going to look for the attack down into GNH Transport Corner. Doesn't quite make it stick this time, but he's certainly got a lot of pressure being applied there onto the back end of Mario Rossi and Rossi is just soaking it up for now but only for a little bit longer it's Goodman's getting away at the front end he is doing a massive job here to stay ahead of that Camaro and Rian Bortma certainly wants to make him pay it's Ford versus Chev and this is what a lot of these fans have come out to see oh, oh there's a move from there, Green Green's made that move now so he's the man on the mission at the moment a little bit further back there running inside the top six 6,000 times South African champion Willie Hepburn in his 1971 Ford Capri doing a great job Miguel Ribeiro riding a good dice there with the likes of David Hall, Andre Tenlapel, and right in the mix along with Ian Urendahl and Sean Hepburn. Oh, some issues there. Unfortunately, another alpha blowing down the straight between two and three. He'll pull to the sideline. Hopefully not bring any more oil onto the circuit. Smallberg has been caught and passed now by the leader. and looks like going to the checkered flag. No one's going to have an answer. The only man who could really run with Darren Goodmans was Rian Bortma. But it looks like Bortma might have been caught and passed by Alan Green in the Ford Escort as well. Let's see as they come down the hill. Yes, there you go. That Ford Escort has got up to second place. What a drive here from Alan Green. Whatever he's done to that Mark 1 Escort, certainly paying off big dividends and up to second place. First in Class D. Class C is going to go to Darren Goodmans. He'll take the overall victory as they cross the line. And then it's Rion Bortma who comes through for third place. Mario Rossi in fourth. Jackie Morrison wins out Class E in five overall. And Willie Hepburn there in sixth. And he celebrates 54 years of racing here this weekend. It's great to see the big mix of cars and a couple of guys doing some modifications. 
and a couple of guys using some seriously maneuvers. Look at this. CrossFit Jack exercises. Give that man a bells. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Boy out there as well. He was dra- racing the first heat in Willie Hepburn's car. The second heat, Hepburn will be at the wheel as we get ready to go now for heat two. Botma pulling in right from the start. That's a big issue to lose the Camara on the warm-up lap. Such a pity there from Botma. We just said it was great having him back involved and he put up a great fight in race number one but did have issues in the final part of that race. Obviously coming now to play here in race two and that is him out. Speaking of coming back, Marco Sullivan, you would have picked up on that big Chev SS, the orange one involved in the first heat and race one's lap one incident. He's there in about fifth place fighting with Neil Bob and around the outside, Johan Smith, as they go through there for uh, turn number one. Dave Kopka on the inside, Cindy Evans Finney on the outside in the Renault. Nice drive there from the young lady. She certainly has been around in historic racing for a while. Used to be in the top historic saloon car category and in some saloon cars at West Bank Raceway days as well. We look at the front end of this field now. We've got the two piranhas out front, supposed to be painted yellow, but uh, only could find blue paint. Oh, problems for one of them. That is our leader, Goodsman. He runs wide, coming out of turn number four. That allows Willie Hepburn, sideways style there from Willie Hepburn. You can hear the crowd going absolutely wild. Well, Willie Hepburn was saying to me just how difficult this car is to drive. It's not like his Opal record, where he's got uh, instantaneous turnability. This one is so difficult to turn into the corners, and he's fighting hard there with Goodmans. Speaking of hard, the Forenza starting to come through as well. That is a car to watch out for very very quick and with Derek Boy behind the wheel he's certainly going to be a man to uh, fight hard there with Dave Kopke at the moment and just ahead you can see it's Neil Lobb and car number T5 Nick Sherwood done a double the distance that he already did in race number one there in his Ford Sierra so great to see him out we've got a change up at the front it's another piranha that's hit the front there and it's Goodsman and you can see Hepburn trying to go on the inside there how is Hepburn able to just do this pace at the age that he's doing fighting that car around and still be running at the shop end and don't forget he gave all the technical details on how to build that car to Darren as well so <laughs> it's going to be a bit of an in-house fight there for uh, honours in the Ford Capri Piranha stable at the end of this one Sean Hepburn but further back there fighting hard you can see nice little fight there with Dave Hall as they come through Hubie Van Malker in there too Nice return here from the SS of uh, O'Sullivan. But there's Kopka diving through. And that little Mazda Capella and the Mazda R100, I should say, of Kopka. Slowly but surely fighting hard for Rotary honors. Oh, there's a big one. Oh, that's Derek Boy coming together with Neil Lobb. The two of them out of Volkswagen Corner and into the kitty litter. Neil Lobb actually ended up on the bonnet of Derek Boy's Forenza. So it looks like the two of them are going to be out of this one. Let's see if Lobb can get back on track. I don't think Derek Boy is going to be able to. Johan Smith, Marco Sullivan, they're still in a good battle there. A little bit further back is starting to come through the back markers. Alan Green, the man who had the pace in race number one, again, just didn't get the start that he needed to challenge the two piranhas out front. Uh, but whatever he's done to this escort is working he's well working because definitely. he's getting away from the rest of the field like they're looking for parking. And the only ones he can't catch are the two Class C contenders of Goodmans oh. and Hepburn. There is the SS diving through on Robin Clark. As they come through there, you can see Kopka applying pressure and right on his tail is Johan Smith. So the two rotary-powered cars are all over the back there of Kopka and fighting hard to try and catch Alan Green in third. David Hall still holding down that top 15 spot in 14th at the moment. You can see these cars just jostling for positions wherever they go around the circuit on the inside there. Good move by car 55. Jan Smith now made that move ahead of Marco Sullivan and then a good battle. That is for top five honours. Well, as the leader gets to the top, remember Marco Sullivan, one of the only factory Rover drivers, riding in a, driving in a SDI V8 at one point. And that car, I believe, has just gone for a mega, mega amount in the UK. So uh, Sullivan now in that SS doing a super job to recover. Speaking of recoveries as well, as we head down to the checkered flag, Neil Lobb back on track and managing to get that car of his back onto the circuit. That little Fiat going to come through now, possibly for a top 10. Checkered flag is out though and Goodmans is going to take the win. Hepburn has settled for second place. He was fighting too hard in the car. Couldn't really race with Darren. He was definitely having some handling issues in that second Ford Capri Piranha. Still what an incredible drive there from Willie Hepburn. He picked up second. Alan Green there in third. Brilliant drive from him. Dave Kopka in fourth. Johan Smith in fifth. And Mark O'Sullivan rounding out your top six. Let's catch up with Darren Goodmans and find out what it was like to race with Willie. Oh, it was awesome to race with a guy again. Uh, I haven't raced with Willie for probably 10 years in West Bank's last. Um, but yeah, to drive one of his cars and to race with him has been an awesome experience and glad for the team uh, coming all the way from East London and having a win. Great day. It's been a phenomenal weekend, Darren Goodmans, and we're looking forward to more action next year as the Passion for Speed Festival goes into its 19th running in the last weekend of January to open up the motorsport calendar for 2020. We hope you've enjoyed all of the action and we'll see you next year. The 18th Passion for Speed Festival is proudly brought to you by SKF, Castrol, NX Legends Racing South Africa, Charlie Superspar, 
and Swatcops Raceway.